Galactic Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. We've got it. This transmission is coming to you. Waging war on corruption. All right, you are go. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines right, of the info war. We saw the enemy coming a long time ago. We were warned by Joel Skousen's uncle, Cleon Skousen, by Ron Paul, by people like the presidential candidate, Barry Goldwater, countless others. But now we're toe-to-toe -to -toe with the main enemy. The top takeover, their biggest attack ever. And... <laughs> It's just if people knew we could beat it, if they knew what they were facing, if they knew this wasn't theatrics, if they knew how real it is, how evil it is. And the enemy knows people are starting to wake up. That's why they're coming down on us, because they're all going to go to prison. And it doesn't mean that the whole world's going to be perfect once we beat this wave of evil. That's the cycle. But if we win, they all go to prison. If we end, a real golden age of humanity can begin. But if we don't win, if we don't get that 100-year reprieve like Nineveh, it's all going to happen very, very quickly. This is a takeover. And I've tried to deny my lion eyes, my lion brain, everything I've looked at. It's like a child rolling the dark tower came where he first starts out and the, calls him the hoary cripple points. It's really him as an old man. Words, there's the path of the dark tower. There's the truth. It's like, no, it's not that bad. You lie. You lie in every word. You look at me to see how the lie will affect me, but it wasn't a lie. I wish every day it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Andrew in Illinois, then uh, Tony, Vince, Kim, Max, and Julio. That's all I got time for. Go ahead, Andrew. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Yeah, great show. Uh, I just want to tell you that maybe I talk on the air afterwards that I did work for Jerry Corsi, but what I want to talk about the the, the purge. Reminds me of the movie that came out, a cameo face of the movie poster. It'd be great to add out 200 generals fired and uh, the banks being changed around with the, uh, all, all, all stuff that's going on currently, you know, to do that with the backdrop of the movie poster. That'd be kind of neat. And, and, and what's your main point or question? I mean, that's interesting what you said. Well, uh, it's just that uh, we've got to be vigilant with what's going on in our bank accounts, pay attention to our statements. and I agree. Uh, and when they blow something up like the Boston bombing, you as citizens have to go to it with your cameras hidden and get the footage to expose their next operation. I have my camera ready, Alex. Good job, brother. Anything else? Oh, that's it. Keep, keep going. You have a great show. God bless you, brother. I just uh, Let's talk to Julio in Illinois and then Tony and others. Go ahead, Julio. Uh, God bless Alex. Uh, you know, you're talking about terrorism and, and, and how the system is targeting individual groups. Well, here in Chicago, Alex, uh, covering the NATO summit, I covered it in 2012. Uh, this week began the trial of the NATO three, basically patsies, Alex Jones. These, uh, Undercover police officers in Chicago for months were looking at uh, going to concerts, taking people's license plates. They put tracker, uh, GPS tracker on these three individuals' cars, Jared Chase, Brett Betterly, and uh, Brian Church. What these people were doing, Alex, are saying, oh, they're going to use Molotov cocktails. No, no, they, do that, uh, they did that in Minnesota at a staged event at the RNC a few years ago, and it turned out it was a total setup. It is a setup. The, uh, the undercover officers, Alex, were giving a 20-year-old beer. They were high on marijuana, Alex. And these undercover officers paid for the gasoline. They encouraged these individuals. No, no, they're leading the attacks. They're not just finding yeah. them and frustrating them. They're organizing them, and it is, it is very evil. Absolutely. It's very evil. And if the jury finds these three men guilty of terrorism, this is the first ever terrorism case in Illinois, I have lost all faith in the system. I've been at these hearings. The hey, look at Hatari. Look at the fraud. Hatari militia. They never said kill anybody or blow anything up. The, the, you know, the Fed kept saying, well, what if the U.N. takes over? What if they're murdering everybody? Well, we'll have to fight. Of course we'll have to fight. Doesn't mean you're going to go out and kill people. And so right there, the, the, the federal judge, everybody said this, this trial is over. 
because they were innocent. So that's the good news is there's still some justice. Great points. You should shoot a video report on that. Julio, we might air it. He's a great reporter out there, a freelance reporter. Tony in South Carolina, you're on the air. Go ahead. How you doing, Alex? All right, uh -huh. brother. You've had economists on that warn the people to only keep enough Federal Reserve notes around to handle their immediate needs. Uh, maybe this warning is just a way to help the people who aren't awake um, to tell them that they should get their money out of the bank, invest it in silver, keep only what they need to cover their immediate bills. Um, on a second and notice as the bank runs start and all this, gold starting to go back up again. The inflation starting to come out. Go ahead. So if you look at, if you do technical analysis, you know, there's an uptrend and downtrend lines. The uh, last week and a half, silver's been bouncing off the uptrend line. If, if it breaks that, then we could go down to like $14, $14 an ounce. Uh, the three-year downtrend line, well, we're meeting that too. So in the next week, you're probably going to see some price action happen on silver. Um, real reason for my call, uh, I bought a PRM 9000 radiation meter from Maser, you know, the same one John B. Wells advertises. Yeah. And it's been running here in my living room in South Carolina for 433 days. Um, my minimum reading was 16 counts per minute. The maximum was 76 counts per minute. The average was 42. Um, the maximum was on December 29th at 4 o'clock in the morning. So I don't know what happened there, but that was 76 counts per minute. Uh, yeah, sounds know. like right on, brother. Yeah, I'm not sure. So Very interesting. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you very much. Great points. Vince in Montana, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, I got a little information. Probably doesn't mean anything, but on the Illuminati New World Order card game, the combined disasters card shows a clock tower uh, falling down, and it also shows five people wearing the Olympic colors of red, blue, green, yellow, and black. And that clock tower is a dead match for the Sochi train station clock tower. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go over to, what's his name, Some, Steve Jackson Games? He's right like two miles away from here. And I've, I've called him a hundred times, just like I've called Stratford a hundred times, trying to go over and do interviews with them because they're based in Austin. They never call back. Our reporters went out there once and they turned them away. But I'm, I'm going to go over to, to, to Jackson's, Steve Jackson Games, right? What's his first name? Yeah, and he put that stuff out like 20 years ago. 95. And, and, and in 95, and I wonder... 19 years ago, how it all keeps coming true. I mean, it is crazy. Maybe that, they have a time machine over there or something. I mean, that guy. I don't know. And, and of course, those games are, are discontinued, too. Very bizarre. Uh, scan a copy of that. Send it to showtipsinfowars.com. Thank you very much, Vince. Uh, Kim in New York. Kim, you're on the air. Thanks. And then Max and Francis, and that's it. Hi, Alex. Uh, yeah, another Illuminati question. Um, are you aware that uh, in the appendix to Fritz Springmeier's book on how the Illuminati create mind control slaves, that he lists Willie Nelson among other entertainers that are actually involved in what he calls, you know, handling of slaves or programming. Uh, um, and I just wonder, in general, if you could comment on how many like entertainers you think are actually are slaves. I thought that was Boxcar in. Willie that uh, one lady claimed. Boxcar Willie, not Willie Nelson. Okay, well, he, his book, which is online, um, does list Willie Nelson, I believe. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I like Fritz, and we sell his book, but I don't, I don't, you know, that's what he, all the people he's talked to are claiming is going on. I've known Willie Nelson for about, I don't know, six, seven years. He's just a really nice, sweet guy. And I know a lot of folks that know him. So, uh, you know, I, I just take all that with a grain of salt. I myself have snuck into Bohemian Grove. We've covered Skull and Bones. Uh, and um, I always get, I've gotten that call about Willie Nelson before. When I go look it up, it's Boxcar Willie. Who was the lady who wrote Transformation of America? Uh, Kathy O'Brien. Yeah, she says Boxcar Willie, not Willie Nelson. And, okay. and then and everybody well, keeps calling me like about that, and it's Boxcar Willie. No, so he has Willie Nelson with an Austin P.O. Box mailing address listed. I, I could send one of your people this link, but... Um, well, I mean, here's the deal. I appreciate your call, ma'am. Just because people say it on the internet or it's in the appendix of a book doesn't mean it's true. I mean, I'm not, I mean, my thing is it's just like people claim I'm Bill Hicks. I mean, people claim that I'm a space alien. People claim I've, you know, uh, I work for the government when I know I don't. So, so much of it is people in the quote conspiracy community, they spend all their time speculating and saying this and that and not dealing with the giant stuff that's coming down on us. And I know Willie Nelson, he has a good heart. And I have a good feeling about him. And I don't believe that. That's what I have to say on that subject.
Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Max in Wisconsin. Go ahead, Max. You're on the air. Hey, uh, Alex. Uh, I know you're a busy guy, but I just want to follow up with you and do my due diligence to see if you had time to review that military truck stuff I sent you from the EAA air show. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I didn't see that. The guys must have missed it, but thank you for sending it. Send it again. We get thousands of emails a day. Let's be conservative, 10,000 a day, and it just gets lost in the mix, but just keep sending it. Every time we have a film contest, there ends up being films that didn't get into it because we missed it or the, you know, the email spam. We had a TSA naked body scanner contest like four years ago or three years ago, and I was like, there's only 100 entries. There's usually 500, and it turns out like 60, 70 percent or more weren't making it through because the word naked you know, in the search function, I see the IT guy smiling out there. I was like, "This is wrong. Check it." So, you know, just, 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 just keep, keep sending it, brother. Okay, and then one more quick thing. I was wondering, what's the likelihood of you doing like an after dark kind of uh, no holds bar, uncensored version of the Alex Jones show? So I'd really like to hear you uh, kind of just let loose and. Be well, this is an uncensored. Really well, I want to be clear, and I appreciate your call, brother. This is uncensored. I mean. My crew's here. I, I, I run the show. Uh, and half the time, I'm not really running things. So um, I tell people what I can prove. I have a lot of concerns and ideas and theories about what's going on that I can't prove. But so many times I can search my theory and find them saying it. That's what's incredible about the, uh, the NSA run Google and Bing and the rest of it is they're using it to see what we're thinking they're all talking too, so I'll have some thought about them. I'll search it, and there they are saying it. It's it's wild. It, it's it's wild. So I'm just a regular guy. Any of you can do what I'm doing here. If people tend to focus in on the big major events that are happening and try to do something about it, Obama's in trouble. Politically, he and his controllers, a very virulent version of the New World Order, are trying to have a cultural takeover because they're not just globalists. They really do hate the family. They really are racist. Uh, they really are uh, double dealers. And so they're really upset about what's happening right now. And they know they're beginning to lose the culture war. So get ready for another counteroffensive with the empire striking back. Let's go to Francis uh, in New York. Francis, you're the last caller. Go ahead. Hey, how are you, Alex? How you doing? I'm all right. Uh, just uh, call me psycho. If you call me Francis, I'll kill you. No, you're not psycho. You're very informative. You're actually, no, 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 no. That's from that's from Stripes. You're my mentor, I believe, when it comes to information. But I just want to tell you something. I am scared what's going on. I, don't I hear you. I think I'm about leaving the country, to be honest with you. I really am. I'm, I'm terrified for my kids, for my wife, for my all my family members. I really am. I'm terrified what's going on. I've been at work for about 10 years already. And it's everything you say, I research it, and it's to a T. You're the best. You're the, actually, you're the best that's out there. Believe me, you are. Well, brother, uh, thank you. But again, I don't want to be the best. I just want to stop this. These people have a score to settle with us. The globalists have wanted to bring down liberty for hundreds of years, thousands of years. And they want to dominate us and conquer us. And they're cold-blooded. And they've decided to do whatever it takes to do it. But waking up to their illegitimacy is the end of them. Congress has a 6% approval rating. Obama's plunging. So the good news is we're tearing them up. So it is terrifying what's happening, as Ted Cruz said. But at the same time, we've got to get super motivated to call talk radio, to call Congress, to start our own YouTube channels, to write books, to make your own films. And we will just individually, with everything we do, if we each talk to 10 people a week, not all of you will talk to 16, 15 million a week like I do, we will overturn the enemy. They need our agreement. They need us to let them in like the vampire asked permission. We have to rebuke them, call them out. We've got to get ourselves right with God as well. None of us are perfect. We got to get our heart right, and uh, we'll turn this around. But no, I mean, this is it. And I've come to the realization they're not going incremental anymore because we're beating them. They're going to go whole hog very soon with you name it. So uh, you're as smart as I am or smarter, folks. What do we do to defeat these people? Any ideas? You still there? Yes, I am. Any ideas? Uh, oh, Jesus. I mean, just give information to, to everyone. Just, just give them information. Just let them know what's going on. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. That's basically it. If people are not going to take your advice, and that's up to them. What You can't force people to believe you what, what you're saying. God bless you, brother. You know, in closing, I want to say this. You look at Rand Paul in a photo with Mitch McConnell we had up on the side a moment ago. And I don't even think Mitch McConnell is an evil guy at the end of the day. 
We know Rand Paul's a good guy, but they're up in this evil system trying to survive just doing a few good things. That won't do it anymore. You got to be like Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Bob Barr. I mean, Bob Barr has such courage.